Hello, my name is Roger Green. I'm the founder and director of Eco Global Fuels, a company that I formed about five years ago to move forward a very unique and novel invention. Now, we make ethanol and butanol, uh, and we do this by a combination of hydrogen and sequestering CO2 and a unique catalyst. So it's a synthetic form of ethanol and uh, other uh, liquid matrix fuels that I've branded solanol because it's a play on the word alcohol as in uh, ethanol and butanol and, and methane and so forth and solar as a symbol for the renewable fuel aspect uh, to, and carbon neutral as aspect of this technology. Now essentially how we do this is there's two important aspects to our technology and that is the hydroxy generators which I'll explain to you and our unique catalytic uh, chamber and when we put all of that together we create uh, re renewable transportation fuels without using food stock. So let's begin with the, uh, what we call the hydroxy generators. Now this is the novel, uh, one of the novel aspects of our technology. If you can imagine a tube seven foot long by six inches wide and inside that tube is our unique cell technology. So it's a form of electrolysis, but a little bit different. There's a lot of innovation here. So we're based on decades of research and development. So essentially, our form of electrolysis is radically different. Uh, you might have to ask yourself, why has uh, electrolysis never been used to be scaled up to a refinery size? They simply haven't been able to do it because Conventional electrolysis uses novel metals and they use internal diaphragms and so they're expensive to manufacture, uh, they, they have high maintenance, they clog up and so forth. So our hydroxy generators essentially are robust and simple and strong and made out of cheap materials, for instance mild steel. So there's the economics of scale, scalability here in the sense that we can scale up thousands of, and manufacture thousands of hydroxy generators which can be conveniently stacked, very compactly stacked, to produce what we call hydroxy gas. So the input into these hydroxy generators is essentially just water and direct current electricity. And out the other end you've got what's re referred to as HHO. So we started with H2O and now we've got HHO, which is essentially hydrogen in a more monotonic uh, uh, state. Now we separate the hydrogen from the oxygen in the next uh, stage of our, our technology, cryogenics. Cryogenics is a known technology. And of course we've got all of the uh, precise calculations for using cryogenics for this uh, form of separation. So we end up with the cheapest, cleanest, most renewable hydrogen on the planet. And of course hydrogen is the building box of all of our uh, alcohol-based uh, transportation fuels. We take that hydrogen and we marry it with sequestering CO2. We take the CO2, we get it down to carbon monoxide, which is just a simple step and part of our catalytic process. And inside our uh, unique catalytic chamber, we can then produce uh, ethanol and butanol and a range of uh, uh, alcohol-based transportation fuels. So obviously we need a, a DC direct current input in running our hydroxy generators. So we have looked at scenarios involving uh, scaling up using solar uh, uh, panels and we've looked at wind and we've also looked uh, very carefully at using uh, natural gas turbines which has uh, worked out very very well and we can also use uh, uh, waste electricity or off-peak electricity from coal power stations because as you know they simply can't you simply can't turn off the coal power station and at night there's a lot of uh, wasted uh, electricity and in fact we can take two negatives from the coal industry, their CO2 emissions and their waste electricity. The, one of the most dynamic and unique and powerful aspects of eco-global fuels is that we are a major sequester of CO2. We need CO2 in our process of making ethanol. 
So remember the process here. Hydrogen, which we can create very, very cheaply and competitively. If you compare conventional hydrogen production, which is called the steam reformation process, it's very, quite expensive and it's also dirty. Uh, they emit a lot of CO2. Now, our process of making hydrogen, we don't emit any CO2 and it's cost competitive. In, the, in fact, we can make it cheaper than conventional hydrogen. And hydrogen is the building blocks of all of this. So if you can make the cheapest hydrogen, every, every, all the ducts start to line up you know, in this uh, process of making synthetic ethanol and other uh, transportation fuels. So essentially we need a, a, a direct current input. And as I've mentioned, we have looked at several scenarios, including the emerging coal fusion or low energy nuclear reactions that are produced by the ECAT uh, technology, which I'm also uh, involved in as the CEO for ECAT Australia and uh, a few other licenses around the world. Now, we take that electricity and we run our uh, uh, hydroxy generators. So basically, this is the only way that you can convert electricity into a transportation fuel. I know of no other method of doing this that's economical. Now, a few more other steps here. We've got hydroxy generators producing, remember, hydrogen and oxygen. So we actually have oxygen, eight parts oxygen to one part hydrogen, as a byproduct. That oxygen can actually uh, be uh, used in several scenarios. Eco Global Fuels is actually a very flexible. Uh, technology because it can bolt on to all sorts of available sources of uh, 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 DC inputs. So we can bolt on to an existing coal power station and basically clean up their act. We can bolt on to gas turbines because our, we, we need the electricity. They produce a very clean source of CO2, which they don't know, really know what to do with. We need that. Plus our oxygen can be looped back in to what's called a pure oxy burn, a pure oxy burn into uh, uh, natural gas turbines or, uh, of course, coal starts to really, really uh, make those turbines a lot more efficient and uh, the emissions are less. So instead of them sucking in all of the air, which is full of uh, nitrogen and the byproducts become quite uh, toxic, we can provide them with uh, a cheap source of uh, oxygen. In fact, it's one of our free, if you like, byproducts of our solenol production. Now, what's also unique here is we have another byproduct. So, we had an independent validation done on our technology last year at Macquarie University, and it cost about $100,000. And they weighed our cells before and after running our uh, hydroxy generators for several hundred hours. So we know how much wear and tear happens on our cell technology. Uh, the degradation was precisely measured. So, and when you, we're running our uh, cells, remember there's just water flowing through in a DC input and they're made out of mild steel. So iron oxide actually forms as a bit of a sludge on the bottom of our hydroxy generators. But we have proven that these hydroxy generators in the current design will last at least 12 years. And we only need to scale that up a little bit more and we'll get even more life out of them and actually a, even a stronger uh, hydroxy flow rate. Now all of that documentation, it, documentation is very, very clear, caref carefully presented on our website here under documents. You'll see the uh, uh, Macquarie Validation Independent Report. You'll see our presentation that goes into all of the precise flow rates and the energy in and the energy out and so forth. Now, our byproduct is iron oxide, and we know exactly how much iron oxide we've got from our hydroxy generators. Now, here's one of the unique things it's a byproduct, it's free. We can actually feed that into land based algae production. Now, we have figured out, with the help of a, a PhD uh, a professor, that the road down towards using algae to uh, biofuel is it's a pretty tough road to take and a lot of people have tried it. There's a lot of innovation that's happening but we have decided to actually, yes, accelerate the algae. For the, You probably know that iron is the most amazing accelerator of algae. 
Yeah, and you probably realize that when algae reprodu reproduces, it absorbs CO2. It's one of the most amazing ways of uh, uh, sequestering CO2. Now, we're going to create a little bit of biofuel from that, but then we're going to burn the algae into biochar. Now, biochar is the most amazing cutting-edge uh, product that's coming out for agriculture now. And it's a way of sequestering the CO2, sorry, the, the carbon, back into the ground and rejuvening, rejuvenating agriculture and arid land and, and so forth because biochar becomes the foundation of uh, uh, all the micro, uh, microbes starting to rejuvenate the soil again. Now when you add the CO2 that we, we need to produce our ethanol along with the CO2 that we're sequestering for our algae to biochar production we get over 100% CO2 sequestering. There's no other technology on the planet that can do that. So let, just, let me take you through this one more time very, very briefly. We're saying that our hydrogen is competitive, it's renewable, it's clean, our hydroxy generators are robust, independently validated, novel, not, not, we don't use any no, uh, noble metals, and the economics of scalability is there. We can scale up uh, to a refinery size. Now you'll notice on our presentations that we've used 16 megawatts as our uh, electrical input. And of course, all of our scenarios are based on that input and the facts and figures that we got from our independent validation. So there's correct and real science and chemistry and economics going on here in our, in our presentations. Now, the next step of course is cryogenics and cryogenics is a proven known technology uh, and uh, we use those quotes and those figures uh, into our uh, cost analysis and then the next step is the catalyst. Now, at the moment, we take CO2 down to carbon monoxide and mix it in with our hydrogen through our catalyst, and we get our ethanol and butanol. Now, our catalyst, we can also put into, instead of a two-step process, which is still economical, and, uh, and it's also being validated, right? This is another unique aspect of our, our technology. But in the future, we'll be probably very realistically be able to get that down to a one-step process with just a little bit more research and development. However, our, all of our uh, calculations and economics is, is based on this two-step process. Uh, now, that is now ready to scale up. We don't really consider this an R&D project anymore. And our next step is to actually make a uh, prototype demo uh, it's very likely to be done in Sydney, Australia. However, it's flexible. It can be built anywhere, wherever we have the, uh, the financial backing and uh, the focus. Now, the minimum size of that prototype needs to be th only 300 kilowatts because that's the volume of hydrogen that we need to put in in a minimal way into our catalytic chamber. And of course, we don't need to build the DC like wind or solar around this. We can just use mains to actually prove the basic steps and to also design some of the engineering uh, and monitoring uh, architecture around this. So we want to do, that's our next step, to uh, do some uh, validation around testing and, and, and safety, which is necessary, of course, but we're experts on hydroxy gas. And we know we can do that. It's just a matter of getting a few sign-offs from uh, government agencies. And then to build our prototype. And that's uh, a working prototype in the sense that we can have then clients coming from all over the world and witnessing this procedure of taking water, taking CO2 in, in DC input, and then uh, producing uh, ethanol without using food resources. And then once we have that built, then we can then take this to the world. We can uh, bolt it on to uh, renewable energy sources like wind or solar, or we could build new uh, solar farms just 
just for this purpose. And obviously, in uh, you know, on cheap arid land and in deserts and so forth, the the price of solar panels are coming radically down. Uh, the economics around bolting this onto natural gas turbines is very, very good because gas turbines they actually don't cost too much. They're very, very efficient, and it means that we can take their electricity, convert that into uh, ethanol and we're sequestering their CO2. And the economics of bolting this on to off-peak electricity from coal is actually even better because that electricity is uh, very, very cheap and now we've got the ability to sequester the, their CO2. So there's a lot of scenarios here that eco-global fuels can lend itself to. But as I say, the next step is to get our prototype built and that's where we would love to have your support. Now my uh, uh, email and my phone number is on the website and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from you. Thank you very much.